Hello and welcome back to the wonderful Creative Cow Shed. Uh, this week we are talking about all things scheduling, which means we're talking about all things automation, which is for the win. <laughs> Anything that makes life easier. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So we are going to talk about scheduling. Now, scheduling tools, to us, now this is going to get onto the jargon thing again. To us, scheduling tool is a word that gets thrown around all the time in marketing. It's totally normal. But we're going to strip it right back to basics and talk about, initially, like, what is a scheduling tool? Um, and basically, for one to put a scheduling tool is a way to uh preload your social media content and have it post when you are doing you know baking your cakes or making your soap or whatever it is that you do or you know talking to clients whatever it is your your social media is done it's loaded in and it is automated to go out at times that are beneficial to your social media and your followers so it is basically an automate. They are automation tools, um, and they integrate with most of the big platforms. Integrate with a scheduling tool of some description, um, and we'll come on to sort of platforms and how they work with scheduling tools l later on. Um, but I think is that that bit of a cover all? That's a good description of of what the heck it is we're talking about yeah just something to make your social media a bit more manageable and we can do i think we can do a couple of examples of use cases because it does vary massively what is going to be useful to you mm. and there's lots of different features that some have some don't and there's lots of different cost differences and it's actually thinking about what you need in your business what's going to help you get on but we'll get on to that yeah, absolutely. So in terms of reasons to schedule, the big thing for for us in terms of delivering a strategy is that it it streamlines everything. Um, social media has become very hungry for content. And with platforms such as Instagram, having feed posts, stories, reels, IGTVs, lives like so many different things um and then facebook has got both groups and pages for businesses now um there's a lot of content that we can push out and my sort of motto and approach to scheduling is if you can get your grid posts or your feed posts scheduled in advance it then frees you up for what i would describe as the more ad hoc stuff more ad hoc activity which is things like stories now reels is a funny one because reels i would recommend planning in advance but um automation of posting them is not here yet everything. this is what happens so you get scheduling tools that allow you to schedule everything you think great i've got it all sorted and then instagram release a new feature and there's no analytics there's no scheduling for it and we all bang our heads against the desk but that's just the way it works there's a always going to be that time lag where the technology has to catch up and i think as well with i think reels sort of sit in a strange little zone between sort of stories and lives and grid posts they're in kind of a bit of a no man's land in between the two so um so i would always say yeah if you can schedule all of your grid posts and feed posts and know that that's all happening, whether that is a few days in advance, a few weeks in advance, our scheduling really varies, doesn't it? Because, I mean, we, we do a little bit of social media management for other people. It's not something we do very much anymore because we're all about facilitating you to do it yourselves. Um, but we do still do it for a few people. And for them, we're t we sort of have content planned out for a month in advance and then usually scheduled for about a week in advance because for us that allows for a little bit of flexibility of things to change and and flex because the two businesses that we do it for do change and flex a little bit um but 
my big thing is if you've taken the time to plan and strategize your social media what you need to make sure then happens is the delivery element because yeah that's where often you know you can sit down and you make this plan and it looks brilliant and you're like yes this is going to get me what I want and then you are wearing all the hats that you wear as a business owner and you then go oh I didn't post yesterday and now I've got to post that today and then it slips and slides Mm -hmm. and or you forget or or you just want to instill a work-life balance like Mm -hmm. it's and also you might be busy being in the business so for example when you had your Libra life stand at badminton and you were really 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 busy serving customers did not have time to be posting but then I'd scheduled up posts that were going out at key points during the day morning it's so yeah oh yeah we're here um but you see it works really well for things like events because then you can jump on stories and things during the day but you know you've got the key information going out like where to find us any deals that are on that kind of stuff it's just done and dusted and the same goes for like all our event photographers that we know you're really really busy middle of the day but the link needs to go out to tell people where to go and find the photos you can schedule that in advance that kind of stuff it's just about thinking what doesn't need you to be right there to do it there's certain key information like podcast links for some of our clients that we do it's stuff that just has to go out and it's easy it's the kind of not the not boring but it's not the ad hoc exciting things and it's the things it's you not super sexy stuff yeah and, you, and it's easy to let slip if yeah. you get those things in the bank scheduled up then that forms a framework of your content and then you just fill in the gaps with the more ad hoc exciting stuff yeah and I definitely think it it one makes it more uh, practical but also it makes it more enjoyable as well because actually making stories and making reels for most people once you're sort of comfortable with it it's quite fun it's quite a fun part you know you can really play with it um whereas grid posts um can be more time consuming and can be a little bit more intensive so actually you know, doing them in little blocks, maybe once a week or once a fortnight, or if you're really wanting to bash it out once a month, um, means it, that it's just taken care of. Um, and and it does also take into account, and, and I actually posted a link in the Creative Cow Shed um, a few weeks ago with that optimum posting times. It means that, you know, quite often, Uh, mid-afternoon on a Tuesday which is like prime time for posting on social media weirdly um quite often we're in meetings aren't we or we're you know we're doing other things or if we're really lucky we might actually be out walking the dogs or something (laughs) um so we don't want to be thinking about posting so we know that we can schedule something to go out like for example fantastic example of when scheduling is important is our is these lives they happen every week we have you know a good month in advance planned in terms of topics that means that those can all just be scheduled up to go out a couple of days before and it's done um you know that that is prime example of, of utilizing scheduling um because it's you know it's sod's law that the day that you have a post is a non-negotiable that has to go out, that 105 other things will happen that will prevent you from doing that. <laughs> yeah, it just it just takes pressure off. Because the last thing you want if that your computer's gone down or something there's something's happening in your business and you know you have to get that offer out or that big announcement out at 3 p.m. exactly. And you know, it, if that's sorted, it's just one less thing to stress about. And we're all about taking the stress out of these things. Absolutely. And then another thing um, is, which has just popped into my head and then exited at speed. Oh, I know. I know. I don't particularly like typing on my phone, like mm. long format posts. I don't like it. So I like to do our wordy posts. I like to create them within our scheduling tool because I can use my keyboard I don't like typing on my phone because I I mean I've got a big you know I've got a big phone this is it's just slow 
a 12 max but like it's still it, like and getting all your hashtags in there. i know you can do hashtag research and copy and paste hashtags to be saved but even then you're often adding extra ones and a good example i had this with a friend of ours the other day done this reel typed out a post put all our hashtags in where did she it go? put in a couple too many hashtags oh, so instagram okay. didn't post the caption and then she messaged me having like absolutely gutted because all that work had gone i said to her always draft your captions and hashtags in your notes section on your phone at the very least yeah um, which is something we've learned the hard way yeah i mean <laughs> it happened to me i'm gonna be very very honest i last night i was posting the jargon buster in the command your content group and it's happened a few times recently, and this is a slightly a side warning, um, that Facebook, even on desktop at the moment, seems to be quite glitchy. And I wrote out the post saying, here's your jargon <laughs> buster, blah, 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 did a load of spiel about how we can keep it up to date and all those things, throwing stuff around on my desk. Um, and then it just disappeared. It went, Facebook has encountered an error. And I was like... Yeah, I've got into yeah. the habit now of... As I type, I control A, control C every time I do a chunk of text. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, because then you've got it saved in your clipboard. You had a power cut yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. Which, luckily, I was on a laptop, so no great drama. But drama for the, the partner of the version. Yeah, but things like that happen. Yeah. So just having any sort of contingency, any black up, really, really helps. And there's a few of the scheduling tools. So, for example, we use Later, and that's got a really good feature where you can save notes with the photos. Yeah, on the photos, So, yeah. as you upload them, you can add, you can write a full caption if you want, or just add the bones of a caption, which when you then go to post it, you can fill out key information, like what was the, what was the situation, who's in the photo, what product's in the photo, locations, all that kind of stuff. While it's fresh in your mind, and the photos are being uploaded, you can add it all. Then three weeks later, when you come to post it, that's still there to remind you, which mm. is a really, really useful feature. It is that's really handy. I mean, I did it for you the other day. We had something that we were just waiting for last minute approval on. So I uploaded the image, put the the caption in the notes, and just said, "As and when it gets the tick, can you just pull it across and and drop it into the schedule?" Um, which just made life ten times easier um so yeah uh, we uh, you can possibly tell we are quite biased towards using scheduling tools um so in terms of what we look for when it comes to a content uh or comes to a scheduling tool um we've as you just said we use later we've been using later for probably a couple of years Long time. yeah and three years, years? Not quite. You've been using it nearly that long. Um, I was Hootsuite for a while, um, and then we made the move across. So, yeah, probably coming up three years, actually. Um, and it works for us. The agency version works for us and the way that our brains work and the way that we like to manage content and all those kinds of things. So in terms of what you need to look for when you get to a scheduling tool there are lots and i mean there are so many out there i mean in terms of like you wrote a list and there was like eight in that list and that was by no means exhaust exhaustive yeah. one two three four five six seven eight nine, ten, list. Seven, 12 13 oh my word yeah so many um yeah. so and and they all work in slightly different ways mm. and Again, I think I feel I say this every week. There is no silver bullet. They all do different things and play well with different platforms. Um, so what you need to do really is make a bit of a checklist of, of what you need from a scheduling tool. Um, some of the things that we would recommend looking at, content management, um, they all do this in different ways or yeah. not, as the case may be. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we it works well for us because there's, there's two of us. Um, uh, our our scheduling tool, we basically have like libraries for each of the sets of accounts that we manage. So 
we have like a central hub it's a little bit like the equivalent i suppose of having google drive or dropbox but all of our photos are uploaded there so we will finish a photo shoot and then charlotte will upload the images to our later account um and then you know we can start using those photos straight away um so the other thing is when you, once you've nailed down what plat what your core platforms are it's finding ones that work well with the core platforms like if is it you family that's just instagram and pinterest or maybe these outrageous things but i i have never used planally um that's because yeah it's just instagram pinterest so yeah we do a lot of facebook a bit of twitter a bit of linkedin so no use to us at all i'd say one of the most challenging ones is linkedin mm. um it plays quite well with hootsuite um it yep. now plays with later which is good uh well later started out as an instagram affiliate mm. it still is so it is very good for instagram like we got story scheduling even popped up a couple what about 18 months ago um so it it's about working out what platforms you needed to work really well with and accept that some of your supporting platforms might not quite work so well with the thing, it the thing to look for is the ones that are official partners yeah. so instagram facebook twitter etc they'll have certain platforms that they'll make their official partner. So it might be that Planly, for example, is an official partner of Pinterest and Instagram, then offers scheduling for other ones, but is not an official partner of. Now, what that means is they've got limited access to the API key, which is basically the thing that makes it integrate. And there may be a limitation on some features. So we've seen it sometimes in the free versions of software where you think you get things like you don't get actual Instagram scheduling, you might get a push notification to then post manually yourself. Little things like that might be held back. So definitely worth prioritizing where you're focusing your efforts on social media, then finding the platform that matches that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and also that it, it makes sense to you, you know, different things work in different ways. Like I don't particularly get on with Hootsuite, for example, just because to me visually, it's not as, it doesn't flow in the right way, but then I know a lot of people who absolutely love Hootsuite. So it is, um, and when we came across later, I can't even remember how I was introduced to it. it might have just been, I was researching, um, but, it sort of just made sense to me how I like to work. Um, so finding one that, that that works in a way that you can understand is really, really important. Um, and also thinking about if you're working with a team. Now, I think most of the people we're talking to are probably looking fairly small scale, just a couple of people collaborating. But then I've worked in organisations where we had to have a much more powerful piece of software. So we use Sprite Social because that enabled much more collaboration. And what it did wasn't just about the scheduling. It was amazing at the listening. So you get all your comments coming in from Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you could assign them to people to respond to all within the app. So for bigger corporations, there's slightly different software that costs more, but does a lot more that might be more suitable as you scale up. Sprout is, I mean, Sprout is a dream for us. Sprout is like the goal if we get to a point where we have got the you know size of budget where Sprout would work, um, <laughs> we'll be jump. I'll, yeah, I'll be first jumping ship because I love it. But it is cost prohibitive for a lot of companies. Um, but equally, it's sort of what do, do I need that level of um, social listening and things? You know, because yeah. if, if there's a maybe three or four of you in the business you quite enjoy social media you can probably keep on top of it um sprout is really designed for those companies who might suffer a bit of flack via social who have to kind of be very aware of what's going on where their name's being mentioned all that kind of stuff people complaining um you know when you look at the the companies that use sprout because they, they obviously do um 
share some of the big names and they they are the the big players in the game um so yeah cost cost is definitely a massive variant you can get anywhere from free through to like how big how big a budget can you possibly find oh you could spend thousands yeah for some of the big ones thousands but it's all relative it's relative to how much social impact your business how important it is and who's doing it where the effort's being spent so you, it might be that a scheduling tool enables you to keep hold of social in your business by doing it more efficiently the alternative may be outsourcing to someone which is then also going to cost money so it swings around about either way it will cost you time and money there's no escaping it with social media there's no quick and easy fix unfortunately it's a very hungry beast yeah, unless you're using something like, is it Hey Edgar? Is it hey? Meet Edgar and Smart yeah. I think both do it, yeah. where they automatically recycle posts for you. Mm. So if you're big into blogging and you've got a lot of content that can be repurposed, those are quite good. But the caveat is that they they basically use AI to build the caption by taking chunks of your blog. So sometimes, it, sometimes they can be a bit not read very well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the trouble is that eventually it can start right to get a little better. If you don't feed the beast enough and keep fresh content coming in in between these automatically scheduled posts. Yeah. But they're quite good. I think they can schedule into groups as well. So if you're if we um, were doing a lot more blogging, for example, that might be something we would look into to keep sharing that information and keeping it fresh. Um yeah, yeah. I think I mean, for us, that wouldn't make sense. For a lot of our clients, it wouldn't make sense. But I can totally see why some companies use things like Me Edgar because it, it's a no, it's a no-brainer. And I'm assuming you can go in and edit those auto posts anyway. So it might be maybe able to humanise them a little bit. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, so we um one thing that we're playing with at the moment um, that has come in, we are big fans of Canva. We have been for a long time again. Um and we are pro pro users um in terms of we pay for the paying for it. <laughs> yes, uh, we 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 <laughs> pay for. Um and I I've just seen actually somebody, I don't know who it is because you haven't allowed us to see who it is that's commenting um, but somebody just put canva now for scheduling so yes they do um and again i was so excited when that happened i remember the literal moment i saw the i logged in and saw it i did a genuine happy dance and i don't get excited about things very often and i, I was just so happy because um, it's now managed to connect up with instagram as well which is the, that that was a day i did like cartwheels if i yeah. if i could do cartwheels i would have done cartwheels um because that's what we were waiting for and we yeah. knew it was coming um yeah. it's still not perfect because you can't do funky things like scheduling first comment yet but if you use canva a lot anyway and you've got loads of your graphics your images in there then it cuts out the middle one 100 percent. and i think canva are really pushing now to be big 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 players in the game um, so I think those things will come. It, it, it's just a, it's a it's a matter of API. It, it's not. I'm sure it's not that their developers can't do it. It will be that they haven't yet basically got the access to be able to do that. And that will also have something to do with you know that there are lots of different agreements in place, and there are certain scheduling tools that can do first comments on face on on instagram sorry and it may well be that they have some sort of exclusivity on that for a period of time we just don't know um it wouldn't surprise me if that is the case um being very sort of skeptical on on these things um and and the strange delays that happen you know <laughs> but uh, yeah so have a think about think about what really is going to make an impact on your business and you and and go for the the platform that has enough of those features. Um, there, there is always a little bit of um, 
sacrifice. Um, I mean, we I don't feel like with later that we've sacrificed anything particularly. Um, I think we just know that there are things that we want it to do that it can't yet do. Um, like for me, the dream would be if we could, because at the moment we can upload direct from Dropbox and upload direct from Google Drive. If we could go direct from Canva and pull it across, that yeah. would be the best of both worlds for me. That would be that would get me really excited, I think. I have a feeling now that Canva is scheduling though, that won't happen. I don't think, yeah, I don't think my dreams are gonna be <laughs> I'm totally honest. Um and I mean we we now are using a mix of, of Canva itself and and later for different things, you know, horses for courses at the end of the day. Uh, we like to we we mix and match to what works for us. Um, we're lucky because we use Canva so much, and we've got the pro version. We've got access to all the scheduling options, so we can just pick it up and put it down as and when it's convenient. Um, you know, when it comes in handy, we can use it. Um, now, I just wanted to, to sort of round off this big like. Use scheduling tools because they're so amazing. <laughs> to, to end this lesson with a bit of a myth buster, um, I'm surprised it hasn't perhaps popped up already, but um, there are there are plenty of social media experts, and I use these rabbit ears, uh, social media experts that like to scaremonger. And one of the things that they like to scaremonger with is um, scheduling tools, um, impact reach. They will impact how well your posts do on social. It's a lie. It's a lie. Um, what will impact your reach on social is how sociable you are on social. Yeah. Don't um, schedule and run. I, th so I think that's probably where the myths come from is where people schedule Think a month course, then and yeah. go, go to Barbados for a month and don't go on their social media. Unsurprisingly, the algorithm knows that you're not on social media. And if you're not engaging, then it won't show you post people. Unfortunately, there is no escaping from the fact that you need to be active. Yeah. If Even if it's a little bit each day. We're not saying you need an hour in the morning, an hour at lunchtime, an hour in the evening, but just if someone comments respond to it, around roughly around the time when a post has gone out, if someone's commenting on it, then just be on there for a few minutes if you can, just to let, keep the ball rolling and keep the algorithm happy. If you can possibly as well. I mean, I know we just said, you know, the whole joy of scheduling is that if you're in a meeting, it doesn't matter, you can blah, 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 blah. But if you are available to interact around when a post is going out, that isn't a bad thing. Um, and interacting on the hashtags that you're using and things like that but that is like the absolute gold standard but otherwise just general daily engagement is what's important um, and would you say pose a question for you yeah. would you say your, your time would be better spent trying to post every day or posting a little bit less but spending more time engaging Part two, yeah. Mm. If you get everything scheduled up, then you're not going, oh my God, I've got to go to post that and I've got 10 minutes and blah, blah, blah. Mm. What you end up doing is you go, oh, I know that post is going out. Oh, I'll just jump on and do a quick story saying that the post is coming up and then I'll share it to my story and I will make sure I go and comment on a few pictures or, you know, look at some user generated content or whatever, that, you know, whatever you might be able to do so yeah that 10 minutes that you would spend going oh i need to post you can go oh uh i'm posting in 10 minutes i'm gonna just quickly jump on and you know do a little bit of, of engagement because it is a two-way street particularly mm -hmm. so particularly instagram yeah. um facebook pages not so much <laughs> facebook pages are a they make funny funny beast Maybe, maybe Facebook, unfortunately, just want us to spend money. Yes, but groups are good. Groups yeah. are a nice place to be at the moment. So, um, yeah, 
it's and, and because scheduling into groups is now possible yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't shy away from scheduling into groups um briefly touching on your favorite twitter <laughs> <laughs> don't try and schedule much for twitter <laughs> in, all, in all honesty because it changes so quickly and is so about current affairs yeah that you just have to roll with it and interestingly sprout put out some research which we'll probably try and distill into some posts for you coming up mm. about what users actually want to see on social media from brands and cultural relevance and being sensitive to social issues were way up on the list, way mm. more than being trendy and innovative and any of that. They want brands and businesses to actually acknowledge what's going on in the world. And so that, for example, yesterday was a great example where you did the reel, didn't you, Alice, about back British farming and in following on from what happened with the Australia UK trade agreement. Because it's for us it's very relevant to our background and our values mm -hmm. and it's a current social issue. So you know, if for us it was we felt the need to say something on that, and that is what people are saying they want to see. Mm -hmm. So Platforms like Twitter are great for monitoring what's bubbling and what's going on in the world. Even if you don't really use it to post as a brand, don't discount it as a listening tool and no, just seeing no. what's trending. And I think the the one warning, the warning that comes out with um, social media scheduling, we saw it last year. Oh it, yeah, it some clangers, it absolute clangers last year. Yeah, it highlighted some clangers. So. There have been some exceptionally diligent social media managers who had sat down in February and gone, I'm getting this year sorted. Yeah. And had... Um, like six months worth of posts. Yeah, particularly events management companies, I noticed, had this balls up. And they'd put out, you know, all these, they'd obviously gone and planned these posts and, you know, lovely, lovely posts. But then the pandemic happened. Mm. I, I'm sure, I can't remember if it was Burley or I don't want to slander the wrong person. Some one of the big horse events put a post out for ticket sales and yeah, long and we were like, like what really? <laughs> and that um, caused a bit of confusion. Um, so yeah, so just make sure yeah. that if anything does happen from a current affairs point of view, that uh, nothing you put out is going to be deemed as insensitive or inappropriate. So just keep half, you know, don't just schedule and then forget about it. Um, you know, that was what you said. <laughs> yeah, that was a fairly exceptional circumstance, but mm. you know, it's it's something that we need to be aware of. Um, so yeah, so that is I think that's that's probably a good sum up of scheduling tools. Mm. With, with our command your content guys, we're gonna be delving deeper into actually looking at what each platform does because we know we're getting into more nitty-gritty with your businesses and we know exactly what it is that you need. We're gonna be talking to you sort of individually on what it is that you sh you could be using what you could be looking at using but if anyone's got any questions about scheduling tools any concerns uh any challenges pop them in the comments um, and we will do our best to come back to you on those um but uh yeah scheduling tools big thumbs up from us i think <laughs> it's safe to say yeah um <laughs> next week what are we up to next week next week we have a very special guest joining us we haven't had a guest for a while um of when Beth subbed in for me. Um, Christine from Aquary Consulting has very kindly agreed to come on chat to us about Squarespace websites. Yay! Now I'm sure we're gonna have to follow this up with a WordPress one at some point, but given that we recently just changed to Squarespace, we thought it was a really great time to talk about that in a bit more detail. So look out for that. We've got her coming on next Thursday to chat all things Squarespace. It's very exciting. Yeah, so we, we wrote a blog for her. And then we said that she had to come and do a live with us. So, and she's really, really interesting. Um, the the Aquarius as a, as a Aquarius Consulting as a business is really, really interesting. So, um, I'm sure we'll get some stories out of her as well, um, uh, as well as talking about. <laughs> it's gonna. It's not gonna be overly balanced because you're gonna have me and Christine. We're like, Squares, Squares, Squares. Yeah. 
and you're going to be like, you put that, but there are other options. I I promise I'm going to try and make a balanced argument. Um, um, and then the next week, I do believe we will be going live on the Wednesday. <laughs> because we're going to be away on the Thursday. I'm so excited. <laughs> so we're, we're warning you now. Yeah, we can do Wednesday. I mean, we might pop up and do a live from Windsor, um, but the the amount of Prosecco that we may or may not have consumed by 1pm on Thursday, <laughs> we might be no use to man or beast. So, uh, yes, we will see you next week with oh, on Thursday at 1 as normal and then yeah, the following week on Wednesday. We'll and then it's in July. I know. <laughs> right, let's see you all soon.